Hello and thanks for joining us on Encore. Coming up on today's film show. Choose life, choose Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and hope that someone somewhere cares. Choose Danny Boyle, choose Ewan McGregor and the rest of the gang, choose a long-awaited sequel. Train Spotting is back 20 years later. Some people build fences to keep people out and other people build fences to keep people in. Denzel Washington and Viola Davies star in Fences. The play's been brought to the movie theatres with one Academy Award winning performance. And far right politics seeps onto the screen as This Is Our Land taps into the political debate here in France. For all that, I'm joined by our film critic, Lisa Nesselson. Hi, Lisa. Hello, Olivia. We're starting with a film that's very long awaited, the sequel to Train Spotting, or T2, as it's known as well. Now, the original became a cult classic in the 1990s. Have they managed to recreate the magic this time around? Well, I'm tempted to say that this is a just about perfect movie about pretty terrible people played by pretty wonderful actors. Unlike many sequels, it's an immensely entertaining story well worth telling. I'm really glad they made this. The four former fast friends from the housing projects of Edinburgh hadn't been in touch with, you, with each other for 20 years. Now, you may have heard that as you get older, you have less energy. Not these guys. There's literally never a dull moment. They're very good at getting into trouble. Now, the same quartet of actors are still alive and well today to play mostly health-challenged individuals who could have business cards printed up that say, profession, loser. I'm not going to give away any particulars because I had such a good time being reintroduced to these guys. Take a look. Now, if I remember correctly, in the previous film, in the story, Mark Renton, played by Ewan McGregor, ran off with thousands of pounds that he hadn't shared fairly among his friends. Is that still a sore point? 16,000 pounds, yes, they're still mighty peeved about that. Renton, who chose Betrayal, gets to give a magnificent new riff on the theme, Choose Life. In fact, I felt like cheering right there in my seat. Here's a little taste. Choose life, choose Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and hope that someone, somewhere cares. Missed you, mate. I missed you too, Spud. Choose looking up old flames, wishing you'd done it all differently. Do you still take heroin? No. And choose watching history repeat itself. In addition to Renton, Sick Boy, Spud and Begbie, one Veronica from Bulgaria is a 21st century twist on the femme fatale. I'd just like to add that uh, at the end of November, I was on a jury in Tbilisi, Georgia. It's held in a very nice multiplex, and there were in the ladies' room four stalls, and lo and behold, each one of them had one of the characters larger than life from Train Spotting, and I thought, wow, pop culture at work. Of course, it's also a sneaky way to install men in the ladies' room, which, as we know, is the ultimate goal of all uh, gender equality activists. Well, it's true that it has stuck with us as a cult film. <laughs> now we're moving to another set of characters who didn't have the best start in life, this time in the US. The film Fences tackles the issue of institutionalized racism in America. Denzel Washington is both behind and in front of the camera here, and the film's an adaptation of a Pulitzer Prize winning play. Let's take a look at the two main characters, Rose and Troy, talking about their son. How are you going to play ball when you were over 40? Sometimes I can't get no sense out of you. I got good sense, woman. I got sense enough not to let that boy get hurt playing those sports. Your mother and the boy too much worrying about whether people like him or not. Everything that boy do, he do for you. He wants you to say, good job, son. That's all. I ain't got time for that, Rose. He's alive. He's healthy. He's got to make his own way. I made mine. Ain't nobody going to hold his hand when he get out there in the world. Times have changed, Troy. People change. The world changes, and then you can't even see it. Now, Fences was nominated for four Oscars. It won one of those. Some people think it should have won more. Mm, honestly, no. 
Uh, Viola Davis deservedly joined the club of apparently 23 individuals to have won an Oscar, a Tony for stage work, and an Emmy for television work. That is very uh, with the uh, Yes, with the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her screen portrayal of Rose, who we just saw there, a loyal wife and mother whose loyalty is sorely tested by her bitter and cocky spouse. For me, she's definitely the best thing about the film, uh, which remains a bit too stagey for my taste. Now, Washington cuts an imperious figure as Troy, a garbage collector collector in Pittsburgh in the 1950s. His idea of being a man is to provide for his family. So he provides a house with a small yard, clothes and food, but he seems to stop short at providing affection to his teenage son, a gifted football player with a crack at a college scholarship. Troy was an outstanding baseball player in the so-called Negro Leagues, but he never got his big crack at, at the big time because of racism. He's still robust in his mid-50s, and his conversation is peppered with sexual boasting, but he's got a secret that's both banal and devastating. And played by Denzel Washington, who we know is an, a superb actor. Now, what's he like here as a director? Well, this is his third time behind the camera, and he knows the material inside out, having performed it uh, on Broadway, as did Viola Davis. But the film still remains too stiff too often. Uh, that said, it's a fleshed-out portrait. It lasts two hours and 19 minutes, and it's about the toll entrenched discrimination has on individuals, on families, on communities. America is built on the idea that if you work hard, you know, you can make it. You can make something of yourself. Uh, we're not supposed to have a class system, but of course, historically, we do. We just don't call it that. Mm, so a topical movie then, of course. Now we're moving to Europe with a Franco-Belgian production that's tapping into the political mood here as well in France, talking about the rise of the far right. It's called Chez Nous in French, and in English, it's called This Is Our Land. So what's all the fuss about here? Well, when you see headlines that say, film angers far right, uh, the only possible response is good, <laughs> for the simple reason that the far right is uh, rarely right about most things. Writer-director Luca Belvo is a gifted fellow whose movies always feature meaty roles for good actors. Much in the vein of Ken Loach, he always builds human aspirations and the way they're thwarted by economics and ignorance into the stories he tells. So this land is ours is far from perfect, but it is smart and compelling. It does an excellent job of demonstrating how populist beliefs uh, get spread through clever marketing. It really is marketing. When the wrong people use the right tactics, it's insidious and can be very effective. Let's take a look. On m'a chargé de trouver un candidat pour les municipales et j'ai pensé à toi. Et ça serait sur une liste du bloc patriotique. C'est quelqu'un comme toi que les gens attendent, proche d'eux. Tu trouves que c'est une fasciste Elle sait pas la même chose. Et puis c'est une femme. Oula C'est maintenant ou jamais, bordel. Putain, on va tous les niquer. On préfère que vous veniez plus. Et pourquoi je viendrai plus Parce que ça va devenir chaud pour vous. And we can see Emily Dickens there in the lead role. That's right. She plays uh, Pauline. Uh, she's a nurse whose days consist of making ho house calls within the framework of the national health system here. Uh, and she has a roster of patients in her town, which is in the north of France. She's a single mother of two, and she also cares for her father, a card-carrying communist who's suffering uh, from the results of being exposed for decades to asbestos. Now, the well-to-do local doctor, Philippe, is secretly part of the National Front-style political party, whose leader is a well-spoken but aggressive woman named Agnès. Uh, she was the chubby blonde we saw there in her party, which looks respectable on the surface, but in its spare time employs scary masked thugs to intimidate and beat immigrants and implicate them in crimes they had nothing to do with, frame them for stuff. Uh, she has a platform of France for the French, very innovative, and likes nothing more than whipping up fear of outsiders, enshrined in retrograde nationalist fervor. So the doctor encourages young Pauline to run at the top of their party's list for an upcoming election. At first, she's not interested. She says she's not terribly political in any way. She leans left, but they artfully indoctrinate her and win her over. And if this can happen to someone like her, obviously it can happen to anybody. She quits her job and is groomed to be a compelling figurehead, uh, sorry, an appealing figurehead, but there's something she doesn't know about her boyfriend, and uh, she she's really doesn't know much about the odious, smooth operators to whom she has lent her pleasant, hardworking face. France's xenophobic national 
Front Party has objected to the very existence of this movie, scary, scary movie, uh, claiming it's some sort of tactic by the socialists to discredit them. Hardly. First of all, they discredit themselves every day, but the film is based on serious research, and it gives viewers serious food for thought. Well, that's going to be food for thought and food for debate, I think, here in France over the coming weeks and the two months running up to the elections. Now, so far, we've talked about drug addiction, racism, <laughs> and nationalism. Perhaps we can finish with something a little bit lighter, a bit more upbeat? Mm, nah. Yes, we can. Uh, politi politicians say and do things which are supposed to appeal, appeal to appeal, appeal to their base and the wildly entertaining characters that inhabit the Panic shorts and the 2009 animated feature uh, A Town Called Panic are these cheap plastic figures that are attached to a cheap plastic base. Uh, and so the base. when... Uh, uh, cowboy and Indian, who you see enshrined on my T-shirt today, uh, locomote. They go everywhere with that little plastic oval <laughs> attached to their tootsies. Uh, this is giggle-inducing silliness laced with the surrealist spirit for which Belgium is justifiably known. And, and if you're feeling morose or suicidal because, you know, one of your friends says the world is going to hell in a handbasket, this 45-minute program of four animated sh shorts is the antidote. I think when the Trump administration repeals Obamacare and replaces it with with something much, much better. That is going to include free plane tickets for anyone who wants to come to Europe to watch the adventures of Cowboy and Indian in, in the panic shorts. Free laughter, of course, very medicinal. Lisa, thank you very much for joining us this week. We'll leave you with some of those laughs, courtesy of some tiny cowboys and Indians. Remember to check out our website. You can also keep up with Encore on our social media channels. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.